Hello from Morris on Comtex Invest. Talk about investing, finance, and professional one for today's item only. The investment talk today will be the ETH. This is my second posting as of today. Respect to recording time of 8.16 p.m. on the Eastern Time. Ethereum current trade $2,906, that about 0.30% so far. Respect to overall crypto market is trading on relatively on a sideways fashion, uh, but with some altcoins selectively are selling off a little bit more severe than others. But with respect to Ethereum as a key topic of the discussion today, it seems like it's just trading on a sideways fashion, right? Ever since the sell off that we have incurred, Yesterday, from the China crackdown news and subsequently reversed, it seems like the markets kind of subtly recover slightly from the $2,750 up to $2,900 at the moment. On a media front, uh, before I go through the technical analysis, um, I would say, collectively speaking, there are some substantive news, but some just more regurgitation news talk about NFT commercializations. So with respect to the first one coming from Bazinga six hours ago, Andre Kroji rolls out a new NFT marketplace on Fantorn blockchain. So Fantorn um, is another um, DeFi development. Um, and this is something that is created by someone named Andre Krojan, per my you know, verbiage earlier already. And it seems like they are cultivating a new marketplace for people to transact. Uh, or exchange their NFT, um, you know, arts creation or uh, or any type of NFT products that they can exchange among one another. So another one on Bazinga seven hours ago talking about why Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin could be in for a bumpy road ahead. And this is something that we know, right, because of the, you know, frankly, the regulatory you know, volatility that we've been incurring, right? Ever since the first one, I've been keeping tabs, right? Um, Christine Lagarde from the Central Bank of Europe um, calling it suspicious warning, right? And subsequently drives some fear-mongering among public investors. And then subsequent to that, on Tuesday and Wednesday with the FOMC meeting, subsequently drives some anticipatory pressure onto the market, kind of reverse back out, right? But subsequently sell back down again. And then subsequent to that, uh, we had another normalization, you know, with you know with the initial U.S. dollar fluctuations, a uh, stem from the FOMC meeting, and then the China crackdown news, right? And as that broke out, we subsequently sold down all the way to $2,750. dollars. So, more bumpy road ahead is definitely the right characterization, I would say. I mean, we have had multiple bumpy roads already so collectively we have to hold out each you know hold hands alongside with one another we need to collectively stay still and do not let the market shake you or shake us collectively because if you sell because of fear that's how you're going to really lose money and lose so innocently at the same time so at the same time with respect to the next news um on Decrypt 11 hours ago, Bitcoin Ethereum recovers from China's latest crypto crackdown. Again, this recovery is not really something that is um, you know, fully confirmed yet, right? Because this is something that is still more of a political side of the spectrum. Um, and also with some media sprinkle onto it, um, on top of the technical is still um, in the negative pattern. We're not really confirmed on the reversal yet at all. So recovery is more of a premature verbiage, if you may. I don't think that's the correct uh, near-term characterization of what we're seeing at the moment. So something to be aware of, right? Just because they say recover doesn't mean you should buy the dip at the moment, right? We have to think more clearly and logically because, again, right, a lot of the publishers or news reporters, are they're not analysts, right? They don't know technical analysis as well. As the financier, if you may, right? Another one from CNBC. Um, I would say this is uh, about 12 hours ago as well. Uh, China is cracking down on crypto again. Um, but this is something that is more of a, um, how would you say, a recap of what happened. And the collective, uh, you know, the tabs that we've been keeping, the seven, um, 
China crackdown news that we've been kind of percolating for the last, I would say, um, eight to nine months so far. If you count that from the New Year's, it's not the first time we've heard that China, which is a communist country, is trying to put some enforcement, right? And we hear more from not just China, but from the European nation, from Jerome Powell, from the U.S., just across the globe, right? Um, so small sell-off can be imminent, um, and volatility is definitely something we have to endure. But ultimately, we are in the business of risk mitigation, right? So now let's go back to the technical analysis. We are still in the negative pattern at the moment. We still have the head and shoulder pattern at the moment. So we're still going to be curv we're curving down still. There is no sign of reversal yet, right? On a scale, it's not a bad level to buy it, but it's not the best level to buy it yet either. But I think it's a you know it's a logical move if you want to incur some risk at the moment, because on the scale of the RSI is still thirty eight out of seventy, and the rule of thumb is anything below thirty five is pretty good, you know, in my risk aversion, and I'm someone that's relatively conservative at the same time, right? For Bitcoin, just to talk about some of the other coins as well, right? The next level is forty thousand dollars, and currently we're just kind of hovering on a sideways fashion. We're not really, this is just uh, we're floating in air right now. So this is not really a real level. So technically, the next level is 40, 37, 34. I'll probably incur more risk if I see the thirty-seven, thirty-four. If the market cycle is gonna keep going on, you know, to lead to the next phase, the depression mode, right? So for respect to Dogecoin, uh, twenty cents is the the right level to buy at. It seems like again, right, we're still in, within the negative pattern, right? And I think the low twenty cents is definitely a, not a bad level to buy at. On a scale, is thirty five point five three out of seventy, so it's not a bad level at all. I think Dogecoin is not a bad dip, if you may, in comparison to the other coins that we've seen so far. Cardano, uh, we had that you know green leap up um, and subsequent reverse back down. We almost made that cross section but we couldn't because we're selling off right now um on the scale is still 45 of 70 so we still have some room to fall uh because we're not oversold we're not overbought either we're kind of neutral but leaning more towards the oversold level uh but still you know more of a upper echelon of it right so i think maybe wait until the 20 cents uh not the 20 cents the two dollars and five cents and the dollar eight seven, which I think is the logical dip, right? But for me, I think one thirty four, one nineteen would be more of a you know, the more of a risk averse move, if you may. And the reward at and versus risk ratio is much better than the level that we at right now as well. Knowing the fact that we have that head and shoulder pattern as well, Solana is still selling up, which is expected. Um, again, the next level that we're gonna go down to will be the one twelve, one eleven. And then the one and then 96, right? But ideally for me, I'll still buy at the 66 just uh, because of my risk tolerance level because this is not forming the same pattern in terms of characteristics. It's not comparable to the other coins, um, which is something that you kind of have to worry about, right? Because I think this is incurring a, a very, a relatively different cycle in comparisons to other coins. So we have to look at Solana with a different lens of eyes, if you may. So XRP, we are leaping down to the 88, which makes sense. We are the 40.76 out of 70. So we still have some room to go down. So 88 would be the dip technically. Um, and I think we might oscillate on a sideways fashion from 88. If we break 88, obviously 78, 69. I'll probably buy this anywhere between 88 and 78. Polkadot, we're still selling off right now, which is good. We are looking forward to the 26. But I think the first level of the dollar cost average, logically, yeah, still the 20, I would say 25 would be the right level. Or the next level, if you keep going down, would be somewhere around like the 25. I think 26 is not a bad level to start to begin your cost dollar cost averaging. Because of the scale, we still at the 47.92. Uh, we, we don't have any indicator of reversing yet either. So something to be mindful of, okay? So... So with respect to a cheat sheet, we are still within the capitulation. I think we are slowly coming into the anger stage and we're going to see some more oscillation on a sideways fashion. That's just the way it is going to be. We are probably asking the questions that we see on the cheat sheet as well. That's why they list, they list them out here. 
And to stay within the logical frame of reference would be 3,000, 2,750, 2,450 for me for Ethereum with my risk aversion personally. But if you bought at the 4,000 or the anywhere close around that proximity, just like hold for a long term, um, ultimately you'll get to these higher levels from here. It's just about time, right? I hope you guys have the right patience to ride out the market cycle, right? And again, I'm not a wizard. I'm just reading what the charts tells me. And really, hopefully, you know, you find my work helpful. Um, and uh, I know my channel is small right now, but I think collectively with your help, we can get there. So my small ask for you guys is to, you know, if you really find my work to be, you know, instrumental or helpful to you, um, you know, feel free to refer these to, you know, my channel to two of your th or three of your closest friends, you know, that you, that you love or you trust. Um, that collectively we can work on this together. Again, right, we need to hold hands and march towards this journey um, on financial freedom collectively together, right? So hopefully this is helpful, and I, I really appreciate, you know, you guys even consider doing so um, by referring to your friends. Um, and, you know, I promise you guys I will not disappoint, and I will continue to be pushing despite what time and how treacherous the water can be. So really appreciate you, and uh, hopefully you guys have a good morning and good evening or good night as well. And stay tuned for this cup. Take care.